the pelvis is held in anatomical position by holding it in a way so that the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle are held in the same coronal plane. Now the boundaries of the true pelvis. The pelvic inlet, the boundaries are sacral promontory posteriorly. This is the anterior border of the sacral one vertebra is known as sacral promontory. Then the upper margin of pubic symphysis anteriorly. The linea terminalis including the arcuate line the iliopubic eminence, pectineal line, and pubic crest. These are the boundaries of the pelvic inlet. The pelvic cavity. The pelvic cavity is continuous with the abdominal cavity above and with the pelvic outlet below. The lateral boundaries of the pelvic cavity are the pelvic surface of the ischium bones on each side. There is more space in the pelvic cavity in the females. Posteriorly it is bounded by the middle of the sacrum and anteriorly by the middle of the pubic symphysis. Now the pelvic outlet. Pelvic outlet is bounded by the inferior pubic ligament anteriorly, the ischiopubic rami, the ischial tuberosity, the sacrotuberous ligament and the coccyx. The dimensions of the pelvis in female, pelvic inlet, Anteroposterior diameter from the midpoint of sacral promontory to the upper border of pubic symphysis. It is 11 centimeters. Transverse diameter is the maximum diameter between the right and the left sides, and it is 13 centimeters. Oblique diameter from one iliopubic eminence to the opposite sacroiliac joint and is 12 centimeters. So the transverse diameter is the maximum at the inlet of pelvis. The pelvic cavity. Anteroposterior diameter from midpoint of S3 vertebra to the posterior surface of pubic symphysis. and is 12 cm. Transverse diameter, the maximum diameter of the pelvic cavity, it is also 12 cm. The oblique diameter from the lowest point of one sacroiliac joint to the midpoint of the opposite obturator membrane and this is also 12 cm. All the three diameters are same in the pelvic cavity. Pelvic outlet. The anteroposterior diameter from the tip of the coccyx to inferior margin of pubic symphysis and it is 13 cm. The transverse diameter between the two ischial tuberosities and it is 11 cm. The oblique diameter from midpoint of the sacrotuberous ligament on one side to the junction of ischiopubic rami on the other side and it is 12 cm. So at the pelvic outlet the, the anteroposterior diameter is the maximum. This figure shows the plane of inlet, plane of outlet and the horizontal plane. The plane of inlet makes an angle of 50 to 60 degree with the horizontal plane. 
and the plane of outlet makes an angle of about 15 degree with the horizontal plane. The axis. Axis lies at right angles to the center of the plane. The, this line shows the axis of inlet and it is going downwards and backwards to show the axis of the cavity and further it comes downwards and forwards to show the axis of the outlet. The next figure shows the J-shaped direction which the fetus takes during its difficult journey. First it passes through the axis of inlet, then through the axis of the cavity and finally through the axis of the outlet. Okay. This model shows the full term fetus delivering out. It first is lying in the inlet, then it descends into the cavity and it rotates. And on rotation, then it comes through the outlet. And once the head delivers, it is followed by the delivery of the shoulders and the rest of the body. The differences between the male and the female pelvis. We will talk more about the peculiarities or specificities of the female pelvis. The bones of female pelvis are lighter, thinner. The body of sacral one vertebra is smaller and it is almost equal to one ala of the sacrum. That means body of S1 is almost one third the base of the sacrum. The pelvic part of iliopectineal line is longer. The pubic tubercles are wider. Inlet is oval. The figure shows the, the shape of the pelvic inlet. In the case of male, females, the pelvic inlet is wider. The indentation by the sacrum is less. In the is less in the case of females, and the widest diameter is placed anteriorly. In the case of male, the shape of the pelvic inlet is heart shaped. It is wider posteriorly and narrow anteriorly and the indentation by the sacrum is more in the case of males. In the males, the cavity is longer, more conical and narrow, like a long segment of a cone. In females, the cavity is shorter and more cylindrical, like a short segment of a long cone. The subpubic angle, angle between the right and left ischiopubic rami is 50 to 60 degrees in the case of males, whereas the subpubic angle is bigger in the case of females and is about 80 degrees. This is a very important characteristic point of difference between the male and the female pelvis. In the case of females, the ischial tuberosities are more everted. The greater sciatic notch is wider. The lesser sciatic notch is also wider. And the ischial spines are again kept at a wider distance. All these mechanisms are there to make the pelvic cavity bigger and roomier for the fetus. Now we do the structures crossing the pelvic brim. From the median plane there is the median sacral artery and two small veins accompanying it. This runs in the center and lateral to it on each side is the sympathetic trunk. This runs on the medial side of the pelvic sacral foramina. 
and in the coccyx, the two sympathetic trunks, they join together. The, on the ala of the sacrum, these structures are from medial to lateral side, the sympathetic trunk, the lumbosacral trunk formed by ventral ramus of lumbar 4 and lumbar 5 nerve roots, the iliolumbar artery, the obturator nerve. The internal iliac artery lies close to the sacroiliac joint. It is a branch of the common iliac artery, the other one being the external iliac artery. And the junction of internal iliac and external iliac artery is crossed by the important tube, the ureter. This diagram shows the internal iliac artery crossing the brim of the pelvis and the ureter green in color also crossing the brim of the pelvis. The ureter runs downwards and backwards till the ischial spine then it runs forwards and medially till it reaches the urinary bladder. Below that is the ductus deferens which is also crossing the pelvic brim in the anterior part and it joins with the duct of seminal vesicle to form the important ejaculatory duct. Only on the left side the brim of the pelvis is crossed by the medial limb of the pelvic mesocolon the pelvic mesocolon is V-shaped, the medial limb crosses the pelvic rim and it contains the superior rectal vessels. The pelvic rim is crossed by the ovarian arteries, ovarian vessels only in the case of the females. This ovarian vessel supply the ovary and also the lateral part of the fallopian tube. 